In this video, we're going to review the basics of data visualization. Data visualization is the visual representation of information and data. It can take the form of graphs, maps, diagrams, or charts. It is a particularly powerful tool because when done well, it can quickly communicate your research. It is important to remember that visualization should be approached with thoughtful consideration because without proper attention, data visualization can unintentionally misrepresent results. At this point, we're going to look at six tips for creating good data visualization and take full advantage of this powerful tool. Data visualization can transform information and raw data into patterns and reveal connections that are not always visible by looking at a set of numbers. Human beings are driven by the desire to understand the world. At the same time, they are bombarded with information, most of which is visual. This tells us two things. One, that the audience expects or even prefers visual illustrations of information, and two, that their attention is limited. The first tip is to understand the goal of your visualization. At this point in your research, you have drawn conclusions. You know what your data is conveying. The reason you want to articulate your goal before starting to plot data points is to help you understand what is relevant to highlight. Having a plan also protects you from leaving out too much, which will unintentionally exaggerate or skew information. This seems like a simple step, but knowing what you're trying to convey to your audience will keep you on track. The second step is to understand your data and its limitations. Your data can have several dimensions, and the greater number of dimensions, the more complex visualization can become. In this example from gapminder.org, a nonprofit founded by Hans Rosling, the dimensions include life expectancy, GDP, income, time, region, country, and population. All of these dimensions convey an immense amount of information concisely, but also require thoughtful curation. A second aspect to understand your data is how to encode or arrange. Some examples of data arrangement include alphabetical, ranked, continuous, and discrete. Knowing the dimension and encoding of your data will help select the right approach when creating a visualization. It is also important to be transparent about the limitations of your data. You can avoid misleading when you are upfront about uncertainties inherent in your research. This can be accomplished by providing metrics such as standard deviation, standard error, confidence intervals, and credible intervals. The final four tips are related to design choices made when creating data visualization. After deciding on your visualization goal and understanding the limitations of your data, the next step is to choose the geometries and how to display the data for the audience. Geometries are the defining features or shapes in the data visualization, like bars in a bar chart. The type of data will influence the chosen geometry. Most geometries are separated into one or more of the following categories. Amounts and comparisons, composition or proportion, distribution and relationship. The following are geometric suggestions depending on data type. Amount or comparison normally utilize bar plots and lines, but other less known options are heat maps and Cleveland dot plots. Compositions or proportions use many types of geometries. The most recognized is a pie geometry. However, this geometry may not be the most effective when displaying slight data differences. Alternatives to the pie geometry include stacked or clustered bar plots, stacked density plots, mosaic plots, and tree maps. Distribution data types typically employ box plots or other visualization examples are histograms, violin plots, and density plots. Relationship data uses scatter plots and other presentations of X and Y coordinate data, which can be effective by layering information 
and utilizing color, point symbols, and size. Now that you've chosen a geometry, the next tip we recommend is reviewing your labels. Words still represent an important part of any visualization. Without proper titles, captions, and legends, understanding the represented data can become impossible. A rule you can follow is simple visuals, detailed captions. Data visualization should be self-explanatory when they stand on their own. Your audience should not need to read all of your research to navigate the contents of your visualization. Color is universally mentioned throughout the literature when discussing data visualization. Color always has meaning, whether it is direct or subtle. An example of direct color use is blue for water and green for land on a map. The direct color approach can also be used as a tool to illustrate added dimension. In the gapminder.org example, color was used to represent four regions of the world. Subtle color meaning is the culturally subconscious associations with color a viewer might have. For example, without any added instruction, viewers naturally associate red with warning and hot temperatures. In addition to adding another layer of meaning, color choices should also reflect accessibility. Using colorblind friendly palettes like Color Brewer Colors is an easy tool for selecting colors that are accessible. Other approaches include testing your visualization in grayscale and using a contrast tester. A final tip when creating visualization is to consider the data ink ratio. Data ink ratio is a term that comes from Tufts design rules. Imagine the amount of ink it would take to print your visualization. Most of the ink should be spent on your data elements rather than decoration or ornamentation. In other words, less is more. You don't want to make a chart 3D just because it looks cool, especially when it distracts the viewer. You can also see in the example created by Dark Horse Analytics that data becomes more understandable and therefore impactful as unnecessary elements are removed. We hope that these tips have been helpful. Data visualization is a large field and we encourage you to explore more about the subject. I'm Lorraine Sheldon from the library. Thanks for watching. You can also connect to more resources by visiting the library or the Center for Academic Performance Writing website. For more information, check out our full series on scientific writing, poster design, and professional presenting.